Dazzle the Shadow Priest is here to save you from a massive beatdown. Harnessing the power of Dark Light, he can protect his allies while tearing down his opponents with a barrage of spells. Just when your enemies think they have a fight won, all it takes is a well-timed Shallow Grave to turn the battle around. We're gonna go from Shadow to Shallow to the history of Dazzle. Dazzle is a ranged intelligence hero who can keep his allies safe through heals and shallow grave, while also beating up his opponents through his low cooldown spells. His first skill is Poison Touch, which launches a cone of poison that deals damage over time and applies a slow to every affected target. If a target is attacked while Poison Touch is active, the debuff will refresh, allowing for very aggressive plays during the laning phase or to ensure kills on runaway foes. Multiple instances of the spell will stack, allowing the damage over time and slow to really tear down an enemy. Shallow Grave is a single target spell that affects allied heroes for a short duration. While the buff is active, allies won't die no matter how much damage they take. However, they will still take damage, so it's best to use this on allies close to dying rather than on someone initiating the fight. Due to the way the skill is programmed, Axe's Culling Blade will go through the effect if a target is low enough. As it turns out, an Axe is all it takes to overcome ancient cult magic. Shadow Wave is a mix between a heal and a nuke. This spell targets an allied unit, healing them for a good amount, and it bounces to other allies depending on the level of the spell. In a small AoE around each target healed, the spell will deal physical damage. This can be used on creeps to safely farm a lane, or to punish enemies who want to engage on your friends. Dazzle's ultimate ability is Bad Juju. This is a passive spell that reduces the cooldown of all your abilities and items by a significant amount. Every time you cast a spell, all nearby enemies will have their armor reduced. This debuff will both stack and refresh the duration for enemies in range. Because of this skill, Dazzle can take a more offensive approach in both his playstyle and item build. Between the quick farming that this spell enables and the constant hand of Midas procs, the Shadow Priest shows us that just because you're an ugly pink troll doesn't mean you can't whoop ass. Dazzle was first implemented in Dota on January 2nd, 2007 in version 6.39. He had a short-lived prototype named Drazzle who debuted in 6.00, but that's another story for another time. He uses the model and responses of the Dark Troll Shadow Priest Neutral Creep from Warcraft 3, and his lore explains the origins of his powers. He was once a member of a secluded troll tribe before a hostile Scourge takeover. He was a master of supporting magics, but after making a pact with Kel'Thuzad, he slowly became corrupted. He now serves to defend the honor of the Frozen Throne. In 6.53, his lore had a revision, being written by Neil09. In this version, Dazzle belongs to the Shadowtooth Clan, a group of shadowy trolls who pray to primal gods. Their magic is stronger than most elementals, so they keep their secrets shrouded in mystery. In return, the gods provide them with various powers, and so Dazzle marches with the undead, hoping that the Scourge can bring him to an ascended rank. Since he uses a neutral creep as his basis, Dazzle's voice lines don't really reveal too much of his character, instead opting to be a typical troll with ice puns. Tastingo, Jebute, bring it on. Oh, we gonna get along just fine. His original skills are noticeably different from his current set, and he was much more of a traditional support instead of having more offensive capabilities. Poison Touch used to mini-stun an opponent on cast, then slow them for a bit, and then do physical damage over time. It seems kind of like a mess, but it does mesh well with his other abilities, and provides a good method to start chasing down an enemy. Weave was a spell that would either increase or decrease the target's armor over time, depending on if they were an ally or an enemy. It lasted 17 seconds, and at max level, it would change a target's armor by 16 in total. The nature of the spell means that it would be more effective the longer it settled in. For an ally, they would have to wait a while to jump in before noticing a difference, while an enemy was much less likely to survive the longer they were chased. This is where the synergy with Poison Touch would come in. You would catch an enemy with Weave, slow them down with Poison Touch, and then the physical damage would start amping up as the armor reduction from Weave got stronger. Shadow Wave was pretty much the same, except it hit less targets, and Dazzle would not target himself automatically. He would need to cast it on himself for the spell to take effect, which would be fixed with a quality of life update much later. Finally, Shallow Grave was Dazzle's first ultimate. Casting this would place a buff on an ally, where they will receive an 80% respawn timer reduction, they won't lose any gold on death, revive with full mana, and the enemy who killed your ally would take physical damage. It may sound like a lot, but honestly it's one of those spells where you just set it and forget it. The buff lasted until the ally died, so you really don't have to think about it all too much, unless you played with your best friend, Feeder McDieback. With this kit, Dazzle was much more of a straightforward support, but unfortunately, his ultimate wasn't very flashy or leave much of an impact. You wouldn't be able to use it in a teamfight situation in the way that Warlock or Lion could, and it's just something you were expected to put on your carry when it was up. This version of Dazzle had a pretty simple job to perform, but for the life of a support, that's not exactly fun. 
The Unholy Healer's changelogs are surprisingly uneventful, with a majority of them fixing bugs or tweaking a few numbers here and there. But every once in a while, his skills do receive an overhaul. The first notable change occurred in 6.54, where Weave and Shallow Grave were reworked. Shallow Grave became a basic ability, and it prevents a target hero from dying for 5 seconds. If this sounds familiar, well, it's what we're working with today. Weave took the place of his ultimate. It still affects armor for both allies and enemies, except now it's in a gigantic radius. This was the team fighting tool that Dazzle needed in order to stand out, hitting the entire screen with a spell that lasted 24 seconds at max level. This could be used in either a pushing or defending scenario, so its versatility allowed it to be used more frequently. On a smaller note, Shadow Wave had a nice quality of life update, where the spell can now bounce on Dazzle, rather than always excluding him. I mean, he's been through a lot to gain his powers. May as well start benefiting from it, right? The last of the major Dota All-Stars updates happened in 6.60, where Dazzle gained his first Aghanim Scepter upgrade for Weave. This increased the duration of Weave at all levels, and expanded the AoE from 575 to 775. It sounds pretty basic, but its effects were massive, as a prolonged fight could be heavily skewed in your favor the longer it drags out. With these changes, Dazzle transformed from a basic concept to a utility choice who's useful in a lot of situations. Don't grow too attached to him though, he's got a lot of facelifts coming his way. Dazzle was semi-ported over to Heroes of New Earth in April 2009 as Demented Shaman. He looks more like he belongs in a castle trying to fend off Leon Kennedy from discovering the truth behind Las Plagas, but Demented Shaman is a close interpretation of Dazzle that has slowly evolved into his own character over the years. His lore states that he is the greatest shame from the Beast Horde, a holy priest turned evil who joined the Hellborn for only God knows what. He drains the life of the land to heal those who would destroy it and defeat those who would defend it. Although his lore doesn't really give us much to go on, his voice lines give us a clear representation of his personality, being a quirky shaman who's proud to be on the side of evil. The root of unholy is here. Power of the arcane. The legion will fall. Patience, sir. The Shaman's original skills were very similar to Dazzle's most recent rework, with Poison Touch, Shadow Wave, and Weave being ported as Entangle, Healing Wave, and Storm Cloud. Instead of Shallow Grave, Shaman had Arcane Hide, which is a buff you can place on an allied hero that comes with a limited number of charges. Every attack the ally receives will be reduced by half. It's like Treant Protector's Living Armor, minus the regeneration, but it gives your allies a cape. So that's cool. Demented Shaman was a personal favorite of mine. He felt strong and fast, and the sound design of his spells made you feel like you were making a real impact on the game. With the Gnome's Wisdom, which would heal you for a portion of your mana spent, he was a farming machine who could sustain himself no matter which lane he went to. Demented Shaman was actually the reason why I chose to be a support player, so I kind of have a soft spot for the hero. Over time, he went through a few changes that altered the flavor of the hero, while retaining the main ingredients that make him memorable. In version 2.0.14, Arcane Hide was replaced by Unbreakable, which is similar to Shallow Grave. If an ally were to take fatal damage, the death is prevented, and they'll have their HP set to 350 at max level. On top of this, the affected target also receives a bonus 60 damage while the spell is active, letting this become a real brawler spell. In version 4.00, Stormcloud became a basic ability and only affected a single target, acting a lot like the original Weave. Also in this patch, Unbreakable became his new ultimate. In addition to casting the spell on an ally, the spell also stayed passive on Demented Shaman if it's not on cooldown or a friend. You can think of it like a Badin's ultimate, where it'll automatically trigger if he takes fatal damage. In 4.6.3, his spells were rearranged once again, with the original AoE Stormcloud reverting back to being his ultimate, and Unbreakable being a basic ability. Entangle had a fun new buff that spawns two Shaman minions around its target for 4 seconds, dealing minor damage per hit. The important thing about this is that you can use Healing Wave on them, giving the spell some reliable targets without requiring allies or creeps. In the latest versions, he lost the ability to spawn minions, so he's back to being a port of the original Shadow Priest. I think it's really interesting to see where New Earth took Dazzle's skill set, and he seems like a natural evolution of the hero. Though Dota 2 would take the character in its own direction, it's nice having a what-if scenario actualized in Han. Dazzle was introduced in Dota 2 alongside the original set of heroes during TI1 in August 2011. Everything was more or less kept intact from the original Dota days, except he's very pink and started out with a rad mohawk. On November 21st, 2013, Dazzle had his model changed, as did a number of other heroes, most likely to differentiate themselves from Blizzard's Warcraft designs. He was a lot more subdued, but he looks more like his concept art and the high-ranking priest his lore paints him out to be. Speaking of which, his story tells us about the Dazoon Order, a tribe of acolytes who train to become Shadow Priests. Their final test before officially becoming one is to travel through the Nothal Realm, although not everyone who goes through this test comes back. Dazzle was the youngest in his tribe to go through the test, and he came out infused with the power to heal through a sinister evil. 
Dazzle returned with a unique power that both heals and destroys. He uses his gifts to fight his enemies and help his friends. His story is somewhat continued in Huskar's lore, where it's shown that Dazzle was the one who brought back the Sacred Warrior from death, denying him from his place among the gods. This shows that the two heroes belong to the same order, and that Dazzle is some kind of renegade medic. This relationship seems to have come from the fact that both Dazzle and Huskar were based off of troll units back in Warcraft, and their skills also had a lot of synergy with each other. Making heroes have connections like this doesn't happen too much in Dota 2, but it's always a welcome sight when it does happen. Dazzle's voice responses don't provide much more information regarding his background, but they do show off his charisma, and they would fit really well in an RTS. Who needs healing? Safe word! Do the wave! Resurrection comes easily to a Shadow Priest! There are a handful of items that expand on Dazzle's story, starting with the Ancestral Trapping Set. This says that the early Shadow Priests wove their vestments in utter darkness to properly channel the Nothal Realm's essence into the fabrics. They believe that over time, the enchantment would grow stronger, and they are prized for their lineage and the powers they bestow. Particularly, the Ancestral Headdress was worn by an Elder during the founding of the Dazun Order, and the Ancestral Cloak is granted to only the most skilled of the Order. So yeah, Dazzle's kind of a big deal. The Ritual Garb of the Father Spirit set shows that Dazzle's into some freaky shit. The Great Pipe shows that you can reach the Nothal Realm by taking a fat hit, though you may not live through the experience. The Ritual Skirt reads, What does Dazzle wear under his skirt? That depends on the Ritual, so I guess his heart briefs in his default model are only on when he's fighting. Similarly, the Fetish of the Father Spirit says, When it comes to dazzling fetishes, the Father Spirit knows best. To be clear, I don't mind what Dazzle does in the bedroom, as long as I'm getting the heals when I need them. Still, kinda curious. Finally, in the Nothic Burden item, you can see a small voodoo doll of axe hanging from it, which is a reference to how Culling Blade can chop through Shallow Grave. Again, I love it when this kind of thing pops up, and I only wish there were more of it. Since coming into Dota 2, Dazzle has had a lot of minor tweaks to his skills numbers, and has gone through a couple of reworks, similar to his Dota All-Stars days. Starting in 6.72D, Shadow Wave now always heals Dazzle regardless of who he targets, and he doesn't count towards the bounce limit. This was a small but significant change that topped off Dazzle's health anytime he went in to help someone, or if he wanted to burst down a creep wave. It can't be stated enough how helpful this change was, and it would keep him relevant as a support pick. In 6.78, Shallow Grave started working on spell immune allies. This change just made sense, and it's weird that this interaction took so long to fix. In 7.00, Dazzle received his first set of talents, which weren't anything special. Pretty basic, but then again, so were a lot of the other introductory talents. In 7.06, Dazzle's Aghanim Scepter upgrade changed. It now turned Shallow Grave into an area-targeted spell, letting it hit multiple allies within its AoE. This does have some potential, but it's highly situational. The only time it would be a required pickup is if the enemy has a massive AoE stun like Magnus or Enigma, so you can save multiple allies from certain death. But for that much gold, you could stand to get better items. In 7.07, .07, Poison Touch was reworked. Instead of doing the whole slow, then stun, then damage thing, the updated spell is a lot more simplified. This was already outlined earlier, so I won't get into much detail, but it did make Dazzle's early game presence much more noticeable. You could certainly risk trying to get a last hit or two, but that damage over time is going to make your life a nightmare. Dazzle also received a refreshed set of talents, but tan my hide and butter my biscuits, they're still super boring. The next huge change wouldn't occur until 7.20, where Weave was replaced with Bad Juju. This made Dazzle a serious threat the more levels he picked up, as he could spam his heals and make teamfights a breeze. Poison Touch also had multiple casts stack its debuff rather than refresh the duration. This patch really revolutionized Dazzle as a hero, and it meant that he could be played in any position and still be a threat. It seemed like no matter which lane he went to, the Shadow Priest had a solid win rate thanks to the utility of his spells. Over the next few patches, Dazzle would be slowly nerfed in all aspects. Bad Juju's debuff duration and cooldown reduction would be reduced, Poison Touch's mana cost would be increased, and Shadow Wave's cooldown would be increased, just to give you an idea. Despite all the pain that Dazzle has suffered through recently, we all know that he can just heal it away and laugh it all off for good measure. Dazzle is the perfect mix of pleasure and pain, able to win games based on his tendency to shred your opponent's armor and keep your allies alive. Whether your team needs a healer, an initiator, a ganker, or even a carry, Dazzle can do it all. Although he has a face that only a mother could love, I hope you aren't too shallow to consider picking him in your next game. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Dazzle. I want to give a shout out to Samson, a fan that I encountered while trying to capture footage for this episode. He played a mean kunkka and whooped my ass a lot. Good game, and I'm looking forward to our next encounter.
Last time in the History of IO episode, I asked, Beep Boo Boo Bop. And that's not a real question. So instead, here are some comments I enjoyed. Three Lives Play said, He protect, he attack, but most of all, he's cute as fack. Jalot said, Ganking time. Come on, grab your friends. We'll go to very distant lands with Io the Wisp and Tiny the Giant. The fun will never end. It's ganking time. Finally, Sad Sala said that he clicked so fast he accidentally closed his porn. Worth. This is the level of dedication I need from everyone all the time. Jot that down. Anywho, follow me on Twitter, support the channel through Patreon, click on all the doodads, and I swear to God if you want your supports to ward the map, you go out there and protect them. See you soon!